Welcome back to Rig Gaming. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. We are getting into the beginning of a new series here on the channel, here on the stream. I'm excited to get into this. Start fresh. Start from the beginning. I'm looking forward to really uh, seeing the progression and seeing uh, all the storylines build and everything that can come with following a series from the beginning. And as you can see, we're about to go in here with the Chicago White Sox. We have just purchased the White Sox from the Reinsdorf family. Three billion dollars was the final number. Rig Gaming Incorporated completed the purchase. And now we're looking for a big culture change as we go through this 2023 and beyond. We, as you can see, we have Luis Robert and Dylan Cease as our two top guys. Liam Hendricks is aging a lot, so we will not see a lot of him in this series, especially um, with our mediocre roster that we have. We have a lot of power here in this lineup, I've seen, so we might end up doing uh, something with a bunch of pieces for us as we go through the season. But we're starting out in spring training. Um, I always like to go through our prospects, um, the real guys, the real people in the Chicago organization before we get into this. So starting out in Class A, the guys who aren't going to be invited to spring training, we will keep tabs on them as their season goes, look at their progression. We have Edgar Cuero, of course, who came over in the Lucas Giolito trade. And then Jacob Gonzalez, somebody that they drafted in the last couple of years. Shortstop prospect. Looks good for years to come. He definitely can develop. Already has good hitting uh, relative to his overall. So I look forward to watching him grow. Of course, we have their top prospect in Colson Montgomery. So he is a good fielder right now not a great hitter so we look forward to hopefully developing his hitting a bit as he goes through the system triple a doesn't really have anybody as anybody would be in the major league roster but there's not a lot of uh younger pieces we have oscar colas we have andrew vaughn so we have a couple hitters that we have to develop but as we look more and more through this lineup, there's a lot of power uh, between Jake Berger, Gavin Sheet, and then a couple other guys, Eloy and Lou Bob, of course. There's a lot of power in this lineup, so I feel like we'll be able to uh, you know, trade some pieces, get some nice returns. And as we look at, at free agency, of course, there's always... Uh, Randomly generated guys that will spawn in. Uh, Trevor Bauer, of course, he will uh, not get picked up by us. But there's sometimes some high potential guys just sitting here waiting to get picked up. Um, but luckily, part of the game is if nobody offers them a contract, they will just keep regressing and eventually retire at the end of the season. So I am not really going to offer anybody here an extension because there is nothing that we have uh, going for us right now there's no uh, there's no pieces that I feel like need to be around long term I this guy's 23 B potential but he hasn't played uh, enough for me to see that he deserves a long-term extension but we're gonna get into this I'm excited to show the uh, the ways I go about things and everything that comes with it. I love to have good prospects and scouts to develop. So let me look through these. I love going high efficiency of position players because uh, I feel like we're going to be scouting position players the most. And I'll have one pit one guy stay on um, pitchers basically the whole time. Give us starters, give us relievers, and give us a uh, a good mix of stuff so it looks like James Walters will be somebody I will pick up 
as we see he has high efficiency high position players will be able to do well there um garth ramirez is not too bad already 84 efficiency but we uh we would like something a little bit more but um it's tough sometimes there's not that many uh great scouts available and especially with this big drop off between 97,000 and 90 there's not uh that much available and i will try to get somebody else for mark bush somebody who has uh better overall efficiency uh so wallace doyle it looks like we'll take mark bush's spot oh i can i cannot afford that contract basic for some reason how does that work I don't really get that. He's making less, but it doesn't matter. So let me see if I can find a replacement for Garth. High efficiency pitcher. So he, this guy can be our uh, just our pitcher scout. And I don't know why I can't pick up Wallace Boyle. Oh, there we go. And now we have our scouts lined up for the year. We have two position player centric, one pitcher, and all of them with high efficiency. Uh, Wallace Doyle with a, a little lower discovery that we would want, but he still has the ability to go out and find people. And we are going to sim through this spring training. We're going to see who does well, see who might earn a crack at the big league roster I'm not really looking to get into that many spring training games this season as there's not really a lot of uh pieces up in the on the spring training roster that we don't already know about uh, so let's check through the roster a little bit and see who's done well so Kopech's been getting hit around a little bit Dylan Cease doing Cease things although just an 84 overall as he came off a little rocky year um, a couple years back, still trying to build that overall back up, but a 2.2 last year, so we'll, we'd like to see him progress, and if we have uh, a bad season, we'll just end up trading him off at the deadline or into July. Uh, Lance Lynn, uh, this, these rosters aren't perfect, it's not exact, so Lance Lynn is going to be with us. I will probably end up just trading him to the Dodgers anyway, just like in real life. So I'll do that probably a little closer to the deadline, but Lance Lynn will probably go to the Dodgers uh, regardless, just like in real life. And same thing with Joe Kelly, so I'll do a bundle deal with the Dodgers for them. But overall, we've had some decent innings. Clevenger hasn't given up a run. Lambert's been getting hit around. But I like what I see. We are 10 and 14. I don't expect us to win a lot of games. I don't want us to win a lot of games either. I'd uh, like us to bring, be able to bring in a good crop of prospects in this upcoming draft. And I'm looking forward to uh, really being able to develop people and possibly get somebody in this year's draft that can contribute in the big league next year. So I'd love to have somebody who gets a 20-year MLB career, a 15-year career with our team because he's able to come in and make an impact early. Uh, Colson Montgomery did not get the call up during for, for spring training. Uh, with that 65 overall, I am going to go in and make sure our uh, our prospects can be progressing at the things that actually help. Uh, we got some weight room training. And then, let's see, for Eric Gonzalez, we'll do that. He definitely needs to improve against righties, but hopefully he can do that as the season goes a little bit. But we do not have a lot of um, prospects to build with either between basically just Colson Montgomery, Eric Gonzalez, and Edgar Cuero. That's really all of the building blocks that we have today. Um, so, looking forward to get into it as we see our 10 and 14 record. We'll check out the lineup real quick. Tim Anderson, doing well, putting the doing the opposite of what he is in real life, struggling around a 230 average. An attendee, 257. Eloy, three home runs, 297. Lubaba, 348. So that's a uh, that bat will always play. 
Uh, we have Gavin Sheets with seven home runs out in right field. A lot of pop, as I said, in this lineup. Jake Berger, Lou Bob, Sheets, and Jimenez, and Vaughn all have great pop with the ability to hit one out at any time. Yasmani, 205 average, and Elvis Andrus with a 203. No one on our bench is really somebody I care too much about. Oscar Colas so struggled so far. 154 and 26 at bats. Moncada, 321. He is just robbing our organization. Getting 12 mil, 14 mil, and 16 mil. He's just going to sit around and not do much. But. Looking forward to getting into the regular season. Just wanted to do a quick overview of spring training. And now we get right into it. We're starting off against the Houston Astros. Let's look at our lineup. See if there is anything that we want to do. Uh, Tim Anderson's definitely our leadoff guy. Especially with his bat to ball skills. Then Attendee, Eloy, Lubob. Lubob in center field is uh, interesting. I would rather have him in a corner outfield spot, but we don't really have that much speed available to us. Um, so Gavin Sheets in right. Jake Berger at third base. Uh, got traded to the Marlins in real life, so we'll see if I end up doing that. And then we have... Uh, couple bench guys that I like but let's get right into it make sure my difficulties are what I want a perfect yeah. let's uh let's make sure some sponsorships are on want to be able to earn as much money as we can so we can hire more scouts etc everything else that money brings but let's jump right into this game. Dylan Cease, Justin Verlander. A great game one to start this franchise mode. The game ones of regular seasons are always something I love to play. Getting to see projections and everything else um, is one of my favorite little parts about the this game sometimes being able to see where they project people to finish how well do they expect people to do in the season and who ends up outperforming expectations and everything else that comes with it so into the game we go chicago white Sox, houston astros we have Kyle Tucker, Dubon, Alvarez, Altuve, Abreu, Bregman, Diaz, McCormick, and Pena for the Astros. So, of course, a great lineup out there in Houston. And we are into opening day of 2023 as we begin our Chicago White Sox series. I'm ready to change the narrative around the Chicago White Sox. We've heard about their culture. We've heard about their locker room. And uh, I'm here to change that. I'm here to bring success uh, in a few years to Chicago. I know it's going to take uh, definitely a couple of years for us to be successful. We have a bunch of pieces that will net us good returns. I am somebody who likes to keep the trades realistic. Um, sometimes there is definitely a winner and loser to some trades. But there, that's what happens in the MLB. That's how players get dealt. As we start with our projections, Tim, 310, uh, 21 bombs for Eloy. Andrew Vaughn projected to lead us with 80 RBIs. 18 stolen bases for Elvis Andrews. And 3.4 projected war for Lubob. So... A lot to like as we start through. I don't want us to be successful as that's not really who the White Sox are right now. So I'm looking forward to making moves, getting some building blocks, and uh, some guys that maybe need a second opportunity, haven't flourished like uh, people expect. 
and I'm looking forward to getting into it there. Uh, we start out here just against Justin Verlander, a former player for my team, the New York Mets. And I loved him as long as he was with us for the for the few months. Did everything we could ever want, regardless of the result. But he is a little bit too chubby of cheeks, it definitely looks like. But Tim Anderson swings through the slider on 0-1, and the second pitch right down the middle. We get under it, and that's popped. And McCormick will make the play, and that's an out. And here comes the projected averages. 277 for Ben Attendee, 279 Eloy, 275 Lou Bob, 228 for Sheets, 232 Jake Berger, 257 Andrew Vaughn, 221 for Sebi Savala, who we will definitely look to get a replacement for during the year. And then we had Moncada down there. But outside, a ball, one. After this game, I'm going to sim a, a couple days so we can uh, start looking at the draft class and who we like, who we don't like. We need to bring in everybody at any position. Um, so I'm going to keep a guy dra scouting pitchers. Hopefully there's a few pitchers that we can scout and find deeper into the prospects that we like. can draft a little bit later under slot value and save some money. As Ben Attendee lifts one, Chaz McCormick gets another play. And I love seeing the little ticker down at the bottom. Uh, I know it might be getting cut off, so I might actually take off the overlay. Um, but with all of those interesting stats that come on to the bottom, it's, uh, it's always great talking points with apparently the Mets open with MLB leading eight prospects in their top 100, which is interesting. I expected the Rays or the Orioles to uh, be on the top of that, but again, we have some uh, people who've graduated from the prospect realm. And as we smack that one a foul and out of play, but one two count here on Eloy and he lines one Altuve stretches that little arm out and he makes the play one two three Tucker to lead off and Dylan Cease comes comes out back here in Houston and our starting pitcher here today. And now Dylan C steps onto the mound. Starters able to repeat his mechanics on a consistent basis, which allows him to move through a line. And he had a very good last year. Looking forward to having him repeat that. There's a lot to like about what he can offer, especially at still a younger age. And at 27 years old, a potential. There's a lot of room for him to still grow. But coming to free agency very soon, uh, there's a lot of places he could go. And he's probably not going to want to stay with us when we're a sub-500 team. So, in we go, 2-0, as Dylan Cease just cannot find the strike zone here to start. And here is a slider. In 3-1, we have Aaron Judge projected for 50 home runs. Mike Trout at 43. Pete Alonso around there as well. And Dylan C starts our season out with a walk. And here is Dubon as he takes a strike. Kyle Tucker is somebody who never stays with the Astros long term. He like always goes to the Reds, it seems. Which, hey, that's a perfect place for him. Experienced outfielder as Mauricio Dubon watches a changeup from Dylan Cease for a strike. But Kyle Tucker is somebody who I would envision staying around with the Astros long term. But there's not really uh, any settings to make the players more likely to resign. Jordan hits one out up the middle. Kyle Tucker's going a third. He'll be in there safely. And there's first and third with one out for the Astros in the bottom of the first after a Jordan up the middle single. 
Jordan is a oh possible MV candidate year in and year out. Is always one of the best hitters in the game. And if it wasn't for Shohei, I feel like he would be talked about a lot more as one of the better hitters in the league. But Altuve pops out to second base, two outs, and I skipped over their projected projected lineups. Very disappointing, but a one count here with a foul ball. And now, oh, one first and third, and we're just trying to keep it tied here in the bottom of the first. Bobby Witt down low, projected to have a 20-40 season, basically. 22 home runs, 39 stolen bases. And there's a nice slider, caught him looking. I like all the stolen bases happening now in baseball. I'm looking forward to hopefully the next the show everybody uh has a little bit higher of base running aggressiveness because there's been a lot more overall movement on the bases this year so we'll see if that comes next year and um, something i'd also like next year is some more settings that we can tune especially sliders you go to nba my NBA, nba 2k's my nba mode there is a ton of Oh, and that is hit right back off Verlander. We'll see if he stays in the game. This game is always uh, consistent with that. So, yeah, he'll stay in the game. But there is a lot of settings when it comes to player values, player re-signing, uh, how likely people or teams are to try to re-sign their players and how much loyalty uh, actually plays into effect. And that stuff is in... NBA, their settings all for it, so maybe maybe next year we'll get that in here as Gavin Sheets swings through a 97 mile an hour Verlander fastball. Oh, one as Lou Bob starts us with a single right off Verlander, and we're gonna try to get him in motion. As Sheets pops on the center, and we will send him back to first base. One out, one on here. As Jake Berger steps up to the plate, one of our higher power guys in the lineup with 95 plus power and takes one outside for a ball. First round pick by the White Sox in 2017, spent the first six years of his pro career with the organization before getting traded to the Marlins this season. So, shout out to Jacob Berger as he swings right through a high fastball. 1-1 one, one count as 88 power versus righties. And now takes an inside circle change. A very, very nice pitch. 1-2 count now. Fouled off. 1-2 again. Lou Bob over at first base. Not gonna get him moving with uh, Jake Berger on the at the plate. Looks for that high fastball. 2-2. Two, two. And we're gonna try to score first. Score early. During the season, I am gonna do uh, minor league player lock games for Colson Montgomery, Eric Gonzalez, a couple of our prospects, so we can, you know, see how they play, see how they swing, uh, just overall see how we feel with them. As Berger flies it to right field, Tucker makes the play, two outs in the inning. And then, especially once we get our first draft class in, we're really start going to be able to uh, build the story. It's going to be very exciting seeing people go through the organization that we draft early in the series and eventually make an impact uh, at the major league level. Andrew Vaughn, another first-round pick for this organization, swings, fouls off the 12-6 to start the at-bat. And two outs here, top second. We watch that high fastball, 95. Verlander's velocity has not gone anywhere, even at 39 years old. Oh, 
you'll see him on the Astros. You'll see a couple other people on their post-trade deadline team. But some of the smaller guys, I just didn't really have time to move and everything else that came into that. Some of the prospects aren't in the game in the roster I'm using. So I'm not really going to go through all uh, hours to just make prospects. So I'll edit some, change the name, and... Uh, call that a good day as long as it matches up with uh, the top prospect system. I basically have every team with uh, a top 10 prospects list that I made for them uh, with 10 or so B potential plus prospects depending on the team. Um, so if you were a C potential, if you were a uh, tier 3 potential prospect, you got maybe an 81 or so. If you were a tier 2 prospect, you got maybe an 84 to 88, depending on what where you were in the rankings. And then if you were a uh, tier 1 prospect, you got an 88 to about a 95, depending on what ranking. And then Jackson Holiday is the top prospect in baseball or at least he should be we're definitely going to take a look at that after this game get a as Yenier Diaz drives one to the gap Lou Bob is running it down and there's two outs and we can take a look at who is in the top 50 for us who might be just on the outside and then we can start taking a look at who we might want to uh, make a trade with for some of our better players later on. As Chaz McCormick takes one and half swings at another fastball for an 0-2 count. And he blasts one. Dead center Lubob running back, able to make the play on the warning track. And that is the end of the second inning. No runs, no hits at that inning. Uh, Sebi Savala stands in for us. Sebi is not really somebody I want being my everyday catcher. Between him and Giannis Monty Grandal, there's not a lot of options here in the organization. As he grounds out to third base. And now Yon Moncada. It's, uh, it's a shame how Yon Moncada came up as this... Highly touted prospect. He's going to be the next big thing. He was swiping bags. Then all of a sudden, he has a 20 uh, percentile speed trait. So, it's weird how guys just stop being able to swipe bases at a high rate and run quickly after a couple years in the bigs. As we swing at three in a row, and it results in a pop out to third base. Two outs, top third, and here's Tim Anderson trying to get his first hit of the year, get himself going, and swung through a high fastball for a strike. Verland is throwing a nice hard fastball so far today, mixing up his pitches well as he mixes the 12-6 in right there. He's going to be a Hall of Famer, all said and done. One of the best pitchers of our generation. Between him, Scherzer, Kershaw, there's only been a few guys to do it at his level. And Tim Anderson smacks one into right center gap. Gonna Oh, it gets by center field, and that's going to be a stand-up triple for Tim Anderson. The throw into home, a little offline. Not offline to let us go, though. As we get our first hard hit ball of the day with a Tim Anderson triple through the gap as Chaz McCormick does not play it well. Does the third base coach really expect me to go on that? That's crazy. And man on third, Ben Attendee swings early, brings it over to first base. And Jose Abreu, the former White Sox. Player. Makes the play. Jeremy Pena with his first half out of the season. Former World Series MVP. Jeremy Pena. Third rounder. University of Maine. So these Astros just know where to find guys. They don't need to go SEC. They don't need to go Big Ten. 
they can find him at the University of Maine. As Jeremy Pena watches a slider for a strike, and that's Dylan Cease's third strikeout of the afternoon. Kyle Tucker, 257 average, 30 bombs last year, 107 RBIs. As he watches another high fastball, Cease throws that thing kind of like a cutter almost. As he hangs a knuckle curve, a little high, 82. Now an 0-2 count here, one out, and that is lined right to Jake Berger, who makes the play, two outs, and Dubon comes back up, 0 for 1 already on the day, gets the paint, takes that for a strike, 0-1 count here, Angels projected to win 86 games down at the bottom. And then the Rangers are projected for 94. So there's there's a lot of change from last year to this year. As Gavin Sheets won't be able to get there as it hits off the net. I'm waiting for it to uh, tell us more. And the Mets to decrease by 26 games. That's interesting. They, getting rid of the pitchers really has that effect, doesn't it? And now Eloy in for the second time. Gonna try and put it in the gap, and that's what he does as he bangs it. That's drilled deep and off the wall, and that'll be a stand up a double. Just kidding, he will have to slide. And there's another extra base hit for us this time to lead off the inning. So hopefully, this time we can get the runner across. As Lou Bob steps in, he's got serious power as he lifts it to Kyle Tucker. And we're not going to try with the 41 speed of Eloy. We probably could have still been thrown out there. But it's okay, one out here, and Gavin Sheets steps in for his second plate appearance. That 90 power just went to waste. Oh, there it was, and then it dropped. A one after swinging over the slider. And swung over the circle change for an 0-2 count. We have some games final down below. Phillies beat the Rangers to start the season. Zach Wheeler versus Scherzer. And that's put into the alley. That will be far enough to tag. As Eloy makes it to third on the shitty throw from shortstop. But two outs, man on third, just like last inning. Let's see if we can get any different result. As the A's beat the Na or the Braves beat the Nationals 8-1 to start the season for them. Mackenzie Gore, Spencer Strider, Strider two hits, one run, eight Ks, and Rutledge not so good. As we hit it well, right to Altuve, and that will take care of the f middle of the fourth. You are done. Steps up, singled his last time up, right up the middle. Takes one outside for a ball. But see, so I'm looking. I'm definitely looking to move. Hopefully, I can get a uh, a high-level prospect for him. I'm, uh, I'm leaning towards Curtis Mead of Tampa Bay, depending on how their arm situation looks. Uh, the knuckle curve outside to Jordan, and now, and now two men on as Altuve singles, and then Ben Attendee throws a missile into Moncada, offline, but two on, nobody out here in the bottom of the fourth, with a 0-0 game, and Abreu unties it. As we put one directly in the middle of the plate. And that 
does not work against former MVP Jose Abreu. As the Astros score their first runs of the season, Dylan Cease gives up his first run, of, run home run of the season. And I was just hoping it got foul. But that, of course, hit the pole. Ran back inside. Very disappointing. As 3 nothing now, Houston. Not what we wanted. Cease had been throwing a relatively good game, even with people getting on base every now and then. But it is a big bounce back. Gets Bregman to... Roll it over to Berger. Makes the play on over. One out here. And with the amount of power that we have in this lineup, it uh, definitely let, gives us the potential to get back into games a little quicker than other, other teams. But it's all about putting things together one at bat at a time, especially against Verlander on the mound for the Astros. But Cease coming back attacking. Regardless of the outing today, he is our ace. We like him going forward. Um, I, I don't think the timeline really matches up, unfortunately, to keep him long term, as I've mentioned. Uh, him, Lou Bob, Eloy, they're all people that I expect to move this season and uh, get high-level prospects. Most likely a couple Bs, maybe an A in the Dylan Cease trade because we know how much arms are worth in today's market. Uh, so we'll see who is in the need when the time comes as 3-1 count here on Chaz McCormick. And Cease gets him to hit one hard. Down the first baseline, Sheets throws it into second, offline as McCormick gets to second. So, now looking to get out of it with just a three runs given up. Fly ball, Jeremy Pena by the plate. Savala makes the play. And into the fifth we go as Jose Abreu nukes one down the line, hits off the foul pole. And gives the Astros a 3 nothing lead. Andrew Vaughn will lead off for us. Top fifth. Taking one inside for Lander Slider. And we're just trying to piece hits together now. Just get somebody on base. One at a time. Swinging under that. Fouled behind. Vaughn has good power. He Ball can jump off his bat just like that, and that'll fall in for a base hit. Hunt 92 off the bat. We will definitely take that. Our team is definitely slow. We are. We have got to be bottom five when it comes to speed, because the only person I've seen with above 70 speed is uh, Luis Robert. But Sevi Zavala steps in 0 for 1 on the day, following the Andrew Vaughn single. And fouls it right back. A one count here. A one on the day as well. Adam Wainwright will be going for his 200th win during this season. Only needs four of them. Same thing with Clayton Kershaw. Wow. And swinging at a dumb fastball. One two count. And that'll be pulled, and that'll be a base hit. Jordan gets it in. And we now have the tying run up at the plate. And that'll be Yon Moncada. But that's fouled. And they are not able to make the play. I saw Bregman had to run around the umpire real quick. But the Rays, 93-69 projection. Astros projected for 96 wins. Yankees at 91. So we'll be uh, we'll be keeping up with all of the teams throughout the season, watching the playoff push by others. 
Uh, Verlander misses with the curve. One, two count here as we look to get this streak continued. And we get the on-base streak continuing as the base is loaded now. For Tim Anderson, our best bat to ball guy in the lineup. Definitely the most consistent hitter. As he just lifts one into center. That's a tough play. We are not going to send him. Oh, that could have been... That could have been bad. 35 speed is just not going to do it. No outs. Benatendi with an opportunity here. With one. As we watch the 12-6. Clip the zone, but not called. 1-0 count here. Benatendi looking for his first hit of the day and season. Two oh two curveballs. Oh, there it was. I was just a little late. As Ben has ninety nine clutch, so he is meant for runners in scoring position. Two one count here. As he rolls over one, that'll get one in. As it's a three a one game here with Eloy coming up. Looking for something to drive in these runs, make it a tie ball game. As he rolls over one, unfortunately, and that will do for the inning. One run, two hits, and it's a 3-1 game. As Dylan Cease looks to complete his fifth inning of work. Catches the corner, strike. One. Kyle Tucker is a free agent after this season. Lots of teams will be interested in what he brings. Stealthy speed is consistently getting over 30 bags in these simulations, with I, which I find impressive, especially with only 68 speed or so. Uh, so he's always a very valuable asset to whatever team can get to him. As he watches one in the dirt, 2-2. Two, two. As we'll try to get him on the in inner half, and we got him on a half swing. And that'll be one away here as he's throwing the ball better so far. And leaves it high in middle. Fouled off. He's had a good outing besides the Jose Abreu at bat, I will say. Couple walks here and there, we'll see. Ooh, just misses the zone. And here's the 2 1. Slider way the fuck outside. What the hell is that? And that gets called. That is a uh, very pitcher friendly call, but of course we will take that. And the full count. Knuckle curve is an absolute bomb. Oh, that is unfortunate. And now Jordan has a man on base with one away. Jordan, originally acquired by the Dodgers, sent to the Astros in 2016. Because what amazing player wasn't on the Dodgers at one point, it seems. As he puts it into the gap, first to third. And there's one out, two runners on. And Jose Altuve looks to drive a run in. And he will do just that as he pops one. Sacrifice fly. And it's a 4-1 game. Back to three, just like that. And now Jose Abreu looks to hit another one. As Dylan Cease pulls one outside for a ball. Back at him. Does not get the zone. Just is not spotting that fastball up so far today. I'm just not able to buy a strike, it seems. 3-0. Watches a slider in the heart of the plate. 3-1. Puts it low, two runners on, and I am going to get somebody warmed up in the bullpen. 
Tukey. That'll work. And now Bregman puts one up into the stands. It's a 7 1 ball game. And just like that, this one looks to be out of reach. But Tukey will come in, hopefully, able to get a few innings of work. As he does not get the call, unfortunately. 1 0 here. And Junior Diaz watches that one go by for a strike. 1 1 count. Dylan Cease in his first game of the season. 4 and 2 thirds. 7 runs, 2 home runs. A couple walks. Not how we wanted to start on the pitching front. As Tukey puts it in the dirt. 3 2 count. And he will get him to swing on the sinker end of the fifth. But Alex Bregman with a three-round bomb. As the game now freezes, and it looks like I will have to restart. Oh, thank lord, it was just a bug. And I don't have to restart the whole game. But Bregman, home run, Verlander still on the mound. And we'll just see if we can scratch and claw a couple. Uh, this does a nice, firm 93-mile-an-hour fastball for a strike. Sanga with a complete game to start the season. Good for him. As the Reds take down the Pirates. Abbott with the win over Mitch Keller. McCutcheon with the home run and an RBI. And we swing over that. Cardinals beat the Blue Jays 2-1. Adam Wainwright with the win. Kevin Gosman with the loss. As Lou Bob puts it foul. Rockies. Rockies lose to the Pirates 9-8. As we watch a 12-6 come into the zone. I thought it was going to stay high. <sighs> All right. Sheets third plate appearance looking to get his first hit get something going and he does just that smacks it up the middle 93 right back up and there's a runner on one out here with Jake Berger trying to put a hold into one use that power and we'll watch it high and inside ball one there are not a lot of guys who I have a part of my future with this organization. Jake Berger is definitely one of the guys I don't really have uh, in the plan. His power will always play. Marlon's got a good one in real life as we smack another one up the middle. Gavin Sheets will stay at second. And there is two on, a one away for... Mr. Andrew Avon smacked one right up the middle himself his last time up. And here is Verlander. Hi. Outside right a little bit. 95. With a six-run lead, they might extend Verlander into the seventh, depending on how he does this inning. But we are hoping to get to him, get a couple more across before they take him out. As he hits the outside slider for a ball. Throws another outside fastball this time. 3-0 to Andrew Vaughn with Sevi Savala on deck. As we just get under that one. We are going to try Jordan's arm. Oh, I stopped. Yeah, I don't think we would have made it. But. Sebi Sabala. Let's see if Sebi is able to find a gap somewhere. And he does just that, and he finds the right center gap as he will get a double, and we are going to score two runs on a double by Sebi Savala. As he goes with the pitch, goes opposite field. And shows that this game isn't necessarily over yet. There's still some scratching and clawing to do. 
as Moncada looks to drive in Savala, and he will do just that as he ropes one up the middle, but 28 speed, you never know, and that's gonna be cut off, and we are gonna be safe at second. Oh my goodness, what is Jose Abreu doing? As Moncada advances on the throw, we have a 4-7 game, and Tim Anderson looks to drive in the fifth run right now. Ah, fuck. Right under that. And that will be the third out into the bottom of the sixth, but three runs across for us as Verlander's day is most likely done after six runs, after six innings and four runs, excuse me. And Chaz McCormick stepping up against Tukey and takes the outside sinker, but Tukey, I'm just hoping he keeps it a 7-4 ball game for us. I'm not really looking for anything special out of him. He has, he is going to be our long relief guy, even with that low overall. Sometimes his stuff is uh, pretty good, and it has natural movement, which is nice. As Chaz McCormick fouls that one off, 1-2 one, count still, and we will try to put him away here. Oh, what do you mean? You know, me and, the, me and this blue are going to have a talk after the game. Thank you. That's right where the other one was. As McCormick strikes out to lead off the sixth, and now Jeremy Pena trying to get his day on a better note. The 2022 World Series MVP batting ninth, and he puts one up the middle, and that'll be his first base hit of the year. And we gotta watch out for that 91 speed. Kyle Tucker to the plate. If he takes the step, we'll throw over. But he did not. And Tuki throws it way outside. Ball one. And now he's off. The throw in, not in time. And there's Jeremy Pena's first steal of the season. As we got a good pop time, he just got the step and got running. 1-1 one, one count, Kyle Tucker fouls it off, 1-2 count. And now, just trying to put it away here. 1-2, throws the curve and he gets him to swing right over it, and that's a nice strikeout from Tukey Toussaint. The former Brave has jumped around a little bit, but... We'll see if we can give him a permanent home here and try to build up that value. As Mauricio Dubon watches a fastball and swings at the curve, fouls it off quick, 0-2 count. And the pitch is in, fouled off, still 0-2. 0 0-2 pitch in, he grounds it, Jake Berger comes in, throws to first, and there's three. And we are done with two-thirds of this ball game here in Houston. And Hector Neris steps on in. Last year, 70 games, 3.72, a 1.01 whip. Very nice numbers from him. As Ben Attendee looks to start paying that 16 plus million dollar per year contract with his performance. And first offering is fouled off. uh, not able to drive that one, fouled it off. First round pick, Golden Spikes Award winner. Oh, one. Ben attendee watches uh, that one. Nerys has been around the game a while, has been with a lot of teams, has seen a lot of success. So. A good arm to go against here in the seventh inning as we try to get something rolling. Ball here, rolls foul. Fouls it off, and we have a one-two count here. As he's throwing three straight fastballs, so potentially something else here in a one-two. Uh, nope. Grounds at the third, the throw over in time, and we have one away here with Eloy. One for three on the day, looking to make that two for four with a base hit here. And he, grounds one and he hits one hard, Altuve off the glove, gets it back, not able to make the play. 
as Eloy gets another single. Two for four on the day for him. Good start. And Luis Robert looks to make this a one-run game. Ah, swinging through a nice splitter. Oh, one on the day. Yeah. Here is the O oh, one outside ball one. We're just trying to scratch and claw our way back. We haven't hit a home run yet. Looking to get a hold of one as we take the inside splitter. Two one with Eloy on first. And I pull my PCI a little bit too far. <sighs> Very disappointing. With 2 2 count here, and that pitch was right there. Next one Inside a 3 2 count, debating on sending him here, but he has no steal, so he will be a slow snail. As we foul off a slider at the last minute, I was. Not sure what I wanted to do there. Wow, we got that late. Three and two, hard hit. Knocked down by Altuve. He should make the play at first, and he does. Very close, though. Will it give us the chance to challenge? It does not look like it, as Robert Robert hit it 114 off the bat right there. It's going to leave a mark. Gavin Sheets looks to drive in the run with the base hit up the middle last time. And takes that on the paint. Ball one. And we're going to get somebody up as well, uh, I think. Somehow Jordan is a god against lefties. So we're going to go with Joe Kelly. Two outs one in scoring position. One for three, two outs, man on second. Gavin Sheets at the plate, and he ropes one into the gap. And that will be up for Gavin Sheets. A two run game here. As Gavin Sheets hit that very well the opposite way. And replaced Eloy on second. Now, two outs. Jake Berger trying to tie up this game or make it a one-run game here. Has light tower power, as they say. And I just got fooled by a disgusting splitter. And one, one here, just trying to put something in play. Swinging over another nice splitter. Hector Neri showing versatility right there. And he just dialed it up for three straight splitters. And he strikes out Jake Berger. And we go into the bottom of the seventh. Tukey is going to take on Jordan Alvarez. As he half swings and takes, apparently. 1-0 here. And there's another good sinker hitting the edge of the zone. We'll attack here with a 1-1 curve. Fantastic. Oh, wow. Tukey is playing a lot better than a 59 overall for us. Andrew Vaughn picks that Jordan roller up, takes it himself, and we have one away here with Jose Altuve, already with a base hit today, and a walk, trying to get on for the second or third time, as he hits a hanging curveball straight to center field, Robert makes the play, two outs here. As Tukey is just looking to get through this inning with his uh, almost three innings of relief work almost done. Will be a very nice day for him out of the pen. As Abreu hits it up the middle, Tim Anderson gets there, throws on to first. 
Set Simmel down, and we go into the eighth with a 7-5 Houston Astros lead. And Brian Abreu coming off of a 1-9-4 ERA season. What more could you want out of a reliever? As Andrew Vaughn steps in as Abreu makes his first appearance of the year. That is a disgusting slurve. I thought that was 100% staying inside. 0-1 here. And there's foul. It was right there, but I was just a little late. And that's a quick 0-2 count here as Andrew Va Vaughn fouls that. And there's a strikeout. Uh, swing through the fastball on the outer corner. Sebi Savala steps in, two-run double, his last plate appearance, a solid opening day for him with a two-for-three day, takes it inside a ball, I'm gonna put Joe Kelly in the game next inning, and Sebi looks to get on for the third time today. And hits it hard, uh, right to first base. And that play is made by Jose Abreu. And now Moncada has had a base hit up the middle today. A lot of our base hits have been up the middle. As we foul off the 97 mile an hour high fastball to start the at-bat. Eighth inning, two outs, outside slurve. But this season will definitely be our quickest season in the series. I am really going to fly through this year, basically, with uh, the draft being very important for us, with trade deadline being very important for us. Um... We might not play that many games here in this first year as we get our uh, system developed and see who we want to keep as we hit one well to center field. McCormick goes back and makes the play as Tim Anderson's lack of power kind of shows right there. And Joe Kelly steps in here. Hard throwing righty. Sinker baller. 97 to start. And Bregman already has a three-run home run today. Ripped it over the left field wall. And he swings at an awful pitch. It grounds at Tim Anderson, makes the play, and there's one away for Joe Kelly. As Yanier steps in, takes a dirt ball. 1-0, and here comes the sinker, ripped down the line, and that will be a hard hit single for Yanir Diaz. Also on this season, I kind of want to do very badly, like I don't want us to be successful at any level. I want to get a very high pick, because sometimes in these in the drafts, you you can only get a real stud for your future if it's a top five pick. There are some people coming in at 80 overall who could truly make an impact for you uh, the second they step into the organization. So, we'll see. Um, there's a lot of moves to be made. I will definitely be making one in the next episode. As Jeremy Pena gets his second hit of the ball game out to an attendee in left. Two on, two outs, as Joe Kelly just tries to keep this a two-run game here in the bottom of the eighth. And there's a nice high sinker. One, one count here. Uh, 98 sinker that came back to the middle. Not necessarily something we want. Oh, what a swing again by the Astros. Grounds it to Moncada, makes the play. We got two runs to make up four in the top of the ninth here. 
Ben Attendee, Eloy, and Lubob here for us in the ninth inning. Oh, and that is ripped down the line. And that is going to be extra bases guaranteed. We know it's going to be a triple, and that's all it will be. As the right fielder did a barrel roll to get that ball. It bounced on in the corner, and we have a man on third. Ben Attendee pulled it enough down the line, right out of reach. And we're in good position right now to make it a one-run game here with Eloy. And he will smack that thing up to center field. And this should be an easy tag. Here comes Ben Attendee. So feet first slide, and it is a one-run game here with one out in the top of the ninth. And here comes Luis Robert. One for four on the day. Has some of the highest power on the team. Watches a high fastball. 95. I was really debating on pulling the trigger on that one. Ended up not. So. See with a bet. Oh, what a nice hard slider. One. One count here. As we look to get somebody on base. Swing over another slider. 1-2. Ryan Presley. Throws another slider. A little farther outside of the zone. Does not get the chase. And here's the 2-2. Two, two. And I hold the swing. Thank God. We'll take it 3-2 count here, four straight sliders. And there's a circle change that we foul off here. The Yankees won in their opening day. Garrett Cole, eight innings, seven Ks, one run. And what is that? Foul to the catcher. Two outs. And we're down to our possible last batter, Gavin Sheets, who's hit the ball well, put it into the gap for a double last time. And that's a nice hard slider that comes back into the zone. Sheets has nice bet to ball skills, 70s, contact, power, vision. So, he's somebody that I could see sticking around and uh, kind of developing more. As he takes an inside slider. One, two, down to our last strike. Hoping he just attacks us and we can put it in play here. And he throws a slurve. That's gross. And the Astros will win uh, the opening day game against the Chicago White Sox. 7-6 to six as we let up two home runs that are the difference maker. Verlander, six innings, nine hits, one K as we put the ball in play very consistently. Four earned runs, Dylan Cease, six hits, five strikeouts, four walks. Just awful. Just an awful outing by Dylan Cease as we'll hop into the box score. We had lots of people get on the board hit-wise. Actually, everybody got a hit in the first day. No home runs. No stolen bases. As Tukey and Joe Kelly, respectively, do a uh, nice work for us out of the bullpen. And Hector Neris gave up a run. Ryan Presley gave up a run. But Brian Abreu had their solid zero inning. But that's okay, you know. I wanted to get a feel. If I like Gavin Sheets a lot, he can definitely be somebody who stays around. He's not as valuable, so he could be signed on a lower contract. As we're going to sim uh, a couple days into the future. Jackson Frazier apparently suffered that. We uh, sim one more day. Lance Lynn, a bruise hand, he'll be good. But now we get to look at the scouting assignments. 
Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of players are in this year's draft. I'm gonna... Looks like we have a nice outfielder in the top five. Uh, very nice lefty power hitting outfielder potentially as we only have six draft picks in this year's draft so we really need to make them count uh, so i'm gonna start with marcos santos uh, and then i will also and then we have ken shibi shabuya that's quite a name, but I don't think he will be available when we are. Uh, I want to take a, a good look at outfield and infield prospects. A lot of the times, these guys with a high overall never actually are a high overall when they start. So, uh, we like to see these guys kind of go up draft boards a little bit before uh, we end up scouting them. Looking for some uh, possible switch hitting outfielders. This this guy looks very interesting as a bat. Uh, might not necessarily develop into a superstar. But he could uh, come in and immediately have a, a bat to play. We're gonna we're gonna take a look at this uh, first baseman. We always like bats that can come play, and then we are going to take a look at some what nation the pitchers are. Uh, so eight percent for some of these guys in Massachusetts. We have Puerto Rico. The number one guy is in Georgia. So we are going to, looks like, scout the East to star. We have a lot of good East prospects right now. So we're going to do starting pitchers in the East for 15% each. And so we take a look real quick. As a couple days in, we are 0-3. So, that's a good start. No matter what, I am happy with that. As I said, I want to have a bad record. I want us to have the most opportunity to get the highest draft pick next year and the highest draft picks over the next couple of years because I really don't see us being in any shape to uh, make an impact, to really be an impactful organization. Um, so we're going we're gonna to be watching as we go through... Um, of course, we are through the first episode. This will conclude, and we're going to get into some simulation, some player lock games, a little bit of gameplay as well in the next episode. Uh, as we get toward the draft, which is in 97 days, but that's get, that means it might be in the next couple of episodes. Um, as we look to potentially make some deals and everything else that can uh, come with it. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe. This has been Rig Gaming with the first episode of the White Sox franchise. We gone!